Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Conversations with the Soul. I'm Rita Hickman, and uh, I'm a body-mind expert, and I own a shiatsu massage practice in northern Illinois, so that's in the Chicagoland area. So um, thank you for joining us this morning. I'm so glad you're here. Uh, today, we are talking about obsessive thinking. So for uh, the next two weeks, I'm going to be focusing on the body-mind. Uh, good morning, Kathy. I'm going to be focusing on the body-mind and how uh, we can influence or um, shift or, or uh, push our, our body-mind into the direction that we want it to go and all the different tools and tricks that I use to do that. So one of the things that I use is something that most people think is pretty negative. Uh, most people think that obsessive thinking or, um, is, very, uh, is something that you want to get rid of. It's something that uh, is negative, is bad, that we don't want to use. And obsessive thinking actually is a side effect usually of not feeling good. So when we don't feel good in our body, uh, we look for some sort of an escape. And one of the ways that we escape is into our mind, into our thoughts. And we start obsessing about the same four, five, six, seven thoughts um, over and over and over, whether it be trying to solve a problem uh, that we have, whether it be trying to figure out what somebody else is thinking, uh, whether it be our to-do list, whatever it is, our thoughts tend to go into obsessive thinking. It's a natural side effect in order to try to feel better. So when we don't feel good, either because uh, we've been triggered emotionally or because we don't feel good in our body, which is actually more common than we think, uh, then we tend to go into obsessive thinking. And uh, we sit there and wonder how we can get unstuck. So many times people think of obsessive thinking as being stuck, and you are. You're going round and round the same thoughts uh, like a track, almost like an oval. A race car track and you just can't get off you just can't shift it so that's actually very normal obsessive thinking is a natural normal side effect of being a human being the key is you can actually use it to your benefit um, when I was a kid we used to have to memorize things in order to you know pass the test let's say multiplication tables or uh, letters or spelling how to spell words and we'd repeat it over and over and over and over and over again until we finally got it sunk into our head um, or we would um, we'd look around and people would, you know, media and advertising constantly giving us the same messages. You know, you have to look a certain way, you have to act a certain way. You know, it's these repeated messages that make an imprint on our brain. And even though we aren't really aware um, of their influence, even though we aren't really aware of, of how it's directing our everyday thoughts, that obsessive thinking is a part of us, and it does. It makes a lot of choices, a lot of everyday choices for us. So how do you use obsessive thinking to your benefit? Because you're going to do it anyways. You're going to get stuck. You're going to feel trapped. You're going to feel negative, not be able to get out of the doom and gloom. And even if your mind is shut off, even if you're depressed and you don't feel good, you're still obsessing about how you feel. I don't feel good. This doesn't feel good. I don't feel good. You know, it's the same thought over and over. So I learned a number of years ago that I wanted to use my obsessive thinking to my benefit. So instead of letting, letting my mind direct what I was going to obsess about, um, letting, you know, the natural flow, I don't feel good, how do I solve this? Instead, I started to obsess about positive things that I wanted to think or feel. So um, many people use mantras, and one of the challenges with mantras is we'll say it, but we'll say it once, you know, or we'll put it on our mirror and we'll see it a few times and then we'll stop seeing it. We'll stop using uh, mantras because we don't, uh, because they don't seem to work. But in reality, mantras do work very well, but you have to do it in an obsessive way. So what if we thought about obsessive thinking as an opportunity to change the wiring in our brain? 
to take back the power and control of what we're thinking. Instead of being influenced and told what to think by everyone around us and by the media and, and what we're watching and how our body feels or old messages. Instead of uh, letting all these outside things, external things control what we want to think, it's time to take back control. It's time to um, exert our own influence on what we're thinking because we all have heard about self-talk and we've all heard about how self-talk sabotages us in the long run. It imprints on our mind, it imprints on our body certain messages and thoughts and we don't even catch it most of the time. What we catch is when we're obsessively stuck in a loop and we know we can't get out. So I'll use this morning for an example. Um, a couple days ago, I had a root canal. And um, because of my root canal, it's taking me a couple days to recover. And I'm kind of uncomfortable because of it. You know, my tooth has been a, a little, uh, and my gums have been a little bit sore and, and uh, very distracting. And so my thoughts have been, wow, you know, my tooth really hurts, my tooth really hurts, my tooth really hurts. You know, obsessive thinking because that's where my thoughts are going. On the one hand, that's, you know, that's positive because I'm focusing on my tooth and that's encouraging it to heal. Because wherever you focus your mind uh, and your thoughts is what, uh, where your body focuses its attention. It says, oh, your tooth hurts? Okay, let's work on that. Let's, you know, let's heal this so it doesn't bother you anymore. The same is true about uh, bigger concepts like love or peace or groundedness. So when I'm in, a, in an obsessive mindset, let's say about my tooth, or about a relationship I'm in, or my boss, or something that I just can't resolve, or a problem with my kid's school, or you know whatever whatever your challenge is. Use that time and use that obsessive space as a, a way to obsess about something that you would really love to have in your life. You know, visualization is great. Um, but only if we do it very regularly, if it becomes a pattern, if it becomes something that uh, we do often. Otherwise, visualization is almost like a, a little light bulb that comes on and then it goes off. You know, it illuminated us just for a moment, but it didn't become a part of our regular life. And so we're not going to manifest it or attract it into the rest of our world. You know, the way we go from um, thought to reality is repetition. Repetition, repetition, repetition. The things that we do every day, the habits we do every day. And obsessive thinking, I mean, wow, if we're going to continue thinking about the same thing for hours on end, uh, just because it's the space we're in, let's throw in something that we really want. So today, you know, I'm waking up, my tooth is bothering me, I'm recognizing that, and I said, you know what, I'm going to focus on the word love today. It can be something as simple as love or as simple as peace or as elaborate as, um, you know, getting a new job or uh, getting a promotion or a raise or finding a soulmate. It doesn't have to be elaborate and crazy. It can be very simple. So I direct my mind. It doesn't take a lot of effort. I just keep saying the word love in my head. So basically, if you were in my head, it would be, Love, 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 my tooth hurts. Love, 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 my tooth hurts. Love, 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 my tooth hurts. You know, and when you do something like that for, uh, let's say, hours on end, because that's what we do when we obsess. We can't get out of it. It's not a 10-minute obsession. It's usually a day-long obsession or a couple days or a couple weeks. What a power of manifestation is that? to obsess, you now have the power to take that obsessive brain, to take that monkey mind, as we call it, and use it as a, the powerhouse that it is to create something outside there. You know, a lot of people, they talk about how our thoughts create reality. And we think that um, positive thinking and, and when we don't feel good, if we think positive, it'll make us feel better. Now, thoughts are powerful but they're powerful because they're cumulative. They're not as powerful as a one-off, you know, as a random thought here or a random thought there. You know, thoughts are, are powerful, but I'm not gonna sit there in bed and think love, 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 
um, and suddenly my tooth is going to feel better or suddenly the world's going to brighten up and be cheerful and amazing and everything's going to go my way. It takes a little while for thoughts to have an impact on the world outside of us. They're like um, little wavelengths we're sending out, almost like a radio wave. And, you know, there's waves and radio waves and light waves all around us. The key is that we want to have a lot of them. And obsessive thinking is the tool and one of the best ways to do it. So if you catch yourself um, thinking the same thoughts over and over, just be very aware of it. Don't be judgmental of it. Don't be mad at it. Don't, um, you know, try to get rid of it uh, because then you're going to obsess about how you feel, about how mad you are that you're thinking these negative thoughts again. You know, that's the judgmentalism gets in the way of actually using this amazing tool that we've been given. So I give you a challenge. I give you a thought. The thought is the next time you notice yourself thinking about the same thing over and over, no matter what it is, I want you to have an alternative thought that you want to put in there, you know, that you want to toss in to that, that rodeo uh, that you're having in your mind. Good morning, Ro. Um, be proactive and pre be preemptive about it. Think about something that you would really love to have in your life, someplace you'd really love to be. You know, take a few seconds and think about that right now. Think about something you've always wanted to have, whether it be groundedness or a relationship or to stop fighting with yourself, something out in the physical world or something out in the mental world. Take a few seconds um, and think about that while I just continue chatting a little bit, okay? Pick something that, that you like. And when you have it, um, you can write it down, you can put it in your back pocket, you can do something so that you remember it when you need it. And the next time you're triggered, the next time you don't feel good or it's in the morning or at night, and you know that happens a lot. We come home from work and we want to sit down and watch television or listen to music because it distracts us from our obsessive thinking. You know, the same thing in the morning. We want to get out of bed and get going even though we don't feel good because we want to stop obsessing about how we feel or what's going on. You know, take that time and use it as a doorway, as a, as a gateway to manifest things, that thing that you just decided that you wanted. Um, for me, I've always struggled with uh, having inner peace, having inner calm. And so when I go into an obsessive mindset, and it's usually because I either don't feel good or because someone in my life has done something that's triggered me and brought up all of, you know, all of that. I can't believe they did that. I, it, I, I'm, you know, I'm amazed that they got away with that. Um, who do they think they are? You know, when I get triggered, that's obsessive thinking too. Throw in there the thing that you would love to have. And for me, it can be love and it can be peace. So even when in my mind, you know, I'm going off on politics or I'm going off on something that somebody did to me, you know, how they hurt my feelings and who do they think they are and I knew this was going to happen again, you know, whatever it is, have another part of your head that just keeps repeating for me, peace, 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 thousands and thousands and thousands of times because that's what the obsessive mind does. It doesn't let go of those um, repetitive thoughts. You might as well use repetitive thoughts that you like, repetitive thoughts that will bring you and attract to you the things that you want. Don't get hung up with the fact that your, um, your repetitive, obsessive thoughts on love or peace or um, a new job or a soulmate, don't get disappointed thinking, why isn't it here? Why don't I feel loving? Why don't I feel peaceful? I'm supposed to immediately. You know, that's not how it works. As I said, the thoughts are powerful, but they're only powerful when they are um, in mass when you accumulate them in a very specific direction. Um, so don't get disappointed when peace and love doesn't automatically turn into peace and love. But if you're somebody who obsesses about things, you are in a perfect place to manifest everything that you wanted. Because what you think about is what imprints on your brain, what neural connection is created, and every time you think about it, it strengthens that connection. 
Here's the beauty behind it, or some of the beauty behind it. When you um, create a neural connection, let's say to peace or love, as you go through your life, when you need that thought to come up, when things get a little bit uncomfortable, uh, you have a very strong connection to that word or to that belief or idea or thing that you want. So let's say you're going through life and somebody on the street corner makes you feel uncomfortable and you start to um, obsess maybe about how uncomfortable they're making you feel, how you want to stay away from them. You're also at the same time going to remember peace, love, joy, um, I want a soulmate, I need a new car, whatever it is. You're going to remember a new thought, a positive thought, when you need it the most. So this is almost like proactive. You know, if you're going to obsess about um, Game of Thrones or obsess about something at your job, you know, go ahead, obsess about it, but remember to throw in that extra uh, added thing that you want. And so the next time and the next time and the next time you obsess, you'll be putting that, that idea out into the world. And the more you put it out into the world, the more likely you are to attract it into your life. And that's how we start to change our brain and our body mind. It doesn't happen automatically, even though for a lot of people it, it can seem like that. It can seem as if, um, you know, we're just going along through life and then suddenly one day everything changed. That's actually a tipping point. It changed because of all the work that you've put in before then. Because every time that you thought obsessively, you also thought, gee, I'd really like a new job. Gee, I, I know I'm going to get a new job. I'm good enough to have a new job. I'm confident enough to have a new job. Um, because every time that you went into that obsessive space, if it was about Game of Thrones or, or your kids at school or your spouse, um, you're also going to be putting in there all of that positive stuff, all of the positive vibes and waves that you want out there. And that neural connection will just get stronger and stronger. And eventually, like clay, you shape yourself into the person and into the mindset and thoughts that you want to have. You get to shape your life and your reality. And obsessive thinking is actually an amazing tool to do that. Um, so I hope you spent a little bit of time and thought about what, um, what you want to get out of your life. What uh, is something that in six months or a year or five years you would really love to have. Because start now, start with the negative thinking that you have. Because you can use the negative thinking um, and, the, and the discomfort as a vehicle to take you where you want to go. It's really quite cool when you can take everything that you thought was bad or everything you wanted to get away from or out of that obsessive thinking. You know, I need to stop obsessing. I need to stop being paranoid. I need to stop doing that when you can use it for good, when you can use it to create the life that you've always wanted and um, to attract to you the things that, that you love and that um, you know would make your life better. So don't diss, don't push away, and don't be mad at the fact that you think obsessively. It's a very natural and normal human experience. It happens to everybody. And if you look at it in a really positive light, what a wonderful vehicle to manifest and to attract everything you've ever wanted. So start today, start now. The next time you get uh, uncomfortable, the next time someone makes you mad or irritates you or you can't stop watching that thing, the next time that happens to you, also have another part of your head that uh, says, I'm gonna get a new job. I'm gonna get a new job. I'm gonna get a new job. <laughs> and says it over and over and over. And don't be worried that it doesn't work automatically because this is the, you know, this is about shaping your brain and shaping your body. And it's going to happen and you're going to hit this tipping point and one day you're going to say, wow, would you look at that? Huh, I got everything that I really wanted. Who knew? You're going to look back at your life and you're going to see that you achieved everything that you had obsessed about. So obsess about something positive. Obsess about something that benefits you. And don't worry that you also have the negative thoughts and the negative thinking. Just focus on the fact that you also have all of those great things that you're going to draw to you. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for joining me. 
Uh, if you want replays or daily inspirations, then go to inspiremassage.com. Um, I send out daily emails and it's to keep us all on track. Now these videos are the same thing as your mantraing or as your obsessive thoughts. When you watch these and you look at new thoughts, um, it imprints on you and it uh, starts to shape your life in a positive direction. So really all you need to do if you want to be in a better place is watch videos like these. Listen to audios uh, that move you in a positive direction and where you want to go. Don't be upset that it doesn't work automatically because that's not how it works. It's like taking a piece of clay and molding it into the shape that you want it to be in creating a sculpture and that always takes time but as long as you do it you do it regularly you're gonna get where you want to go you already know that's true you've seen it in your life the things that you think about are the things that you create so when you think negatively also throw in a lot of positive thoughts and positive things that you'd love to have in your life so I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'm so glad you joined me and I'll be here again tomorrow morning at 8:15. And we'll be talking about another body-mind concept and things that you can actually on the ground do that help you um, become the person you want to be and to achieve the things that you have always wanted to achieve. So thank you. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye.